Alright guys, now we're going to take a look at the industrial changes during this time period of the Jeffersonian era. This is a huge change in technology. 1764, even long before this, Richard Arkwright had invented a device in England that used running water to spin cotton into thread, what was known as the water frame. Um, and textile mills would just spring up next to rivers across New England. Um, the entire process, now housed in one building, what was known as the factory system. Workers had set hours, had to keep uh, up with the machines, and the mill owners now needed investors to have the money to operate these factories. And so not only does Richard Arkwright invent this water frame, but later on, with the help of James Watt's invention of the steam engine, he develops the spinning jenny, which uses now steam power to spin cotton uh, into thread. And because of that, you now have these textile mills powered by steam engines that could be built anywhere. But Britain tried to prevent this information from getting out because it gave them a big advantage. But 1789, Samuel Slater brought the plans for Arkwright's machines to the United States. He kind of stole them. And him and Moses Brown set up a textile mill using his designs in Rhode Island. And with the War of 1812, American industries grow with no competition from Great Britain. And one guy who takes this to the next level is Francis Cabot Lowell. He took his knowledge of the British weaving machines to build his own factories and set up an, actually an entire town called Lowell, Massachusetts, spinning uh, into thread and weaving into fabric. We're all housed now in one building. And so here you see Samuel Slater, who's kind of the guy who brings all of this to the United States. But it's Lowell's ideas that revolutionize everything. Everything housed in one building and the entire process taken care of. After his death, the uh, owners of the factories set up boarding houses where the girls had set work hours, curfews, all of these rules, and they came to be known as the Lowell Girls. And it actually provided a, a sense of independence for a lot of them and a chance to move on uh, in the world and advance in society. There was a library and a hospital around them. So these factories were bringing in these young women here and provided this job and education that they wouldn't have had. But factory life wasn't easy. Um, they experimented with new ideas like mass production. In the 1790s, Eli Whitney invents interchangeable parts to speed up the manufacturing and repair processes. Now, a product didn't have to be made entirely from start to finish by hand and custom made. Thing, you now made molds and so that you could replace parts instead of the entire thing. Prices on goods, on goods fell because you could produce the product in shorter time. And now you can use unskilled labor, which provided jobs across the board. The problem with this was that the Lowell Mills were very unique. Most factory owners didn't take care of their workers the way... Uh, the Lowell Mills did. Uh, they hired ch children. The conditions were not very good in these factories. They were working 12 to 14 hour days. There was poor lighting, little fresh air, and the machines had no safety equipment. Um, but in addition to all of this, there was one other source that provided light for the women in the mills. Their secret meetings at night are only possible with the light from lamps powered by an extraordinary creature. whale oil open up the night and like so many really transformative uh, technological innovations it expanded human freedom it created a way for people to get more do more and, and achieve more crude oil won't be discovered for another 20 years until then america runs on whale oil the whaling industry helped invent part of the kind of industrial revolution and the classic American workaholic, <laughs> work around the clock kind of environment where if you had more light to keep you going in those dark winter days, um, you could get more done, you could make more money, and you could you know, kind of drive the economy forward. Whales are among the largest creatures to ever live on Earth. Up to 180 tons and more than 100 feet long. A single whale can produce up to 3,000 gallons of oil. Even today, whale oil is used by NASA. The Hubble Space Telescope runs on it. Biggest industries. 
bringing in $11 million a year. But the human cost is also high. Half of all ships will eventually be lost at sea. Few men are willing to take the risk. But it's an opportunity for African Americans. 20,000 free men and escaped slaves take to the seas. Thanks guys for paying attention. Hopefully we took good notes.